up when you're a badass. Yeah. Like, like, like Einstein. That's right. all I mean, what he did that was so hard is he was able to eliminate the prejudice that you think that you're special in one location versus another, or that you're privileged, or, or you have a preference, you know, of a preferred point of view. Right. And, and it feels like that when you talk about trains. So the hardest thing for people to think about is to remove that sort of bias and to think instead, you know, more abstractly. Right. It's really amazing. So what we were going to do was tell you about all about this on a train, but instead we ended up- We got up a train coming now. Is, oh, look, okay. okay. So now if you look yeah. over there, yeah. the, that's the Manhattan Bridge, and you'll see a train coming across. So you so imagine an experiment where you have a mirror at the bottom mm -hmm. and a mirror on at the top of the train, and you shine a beam of light from one to the other. It reflects back and forth, straight yeah. up and down. Yeah, like this is an iPhone. This is a very old-fashioned, you know, iWatch. Right. So, right. And so it's keeping the time. On the moving train, you see yeah. just going straight up and down. But right. we yeah. off the train yeah. are right. trying to watch that happen, right. Right. and we'll see the beam of light emanate from down here and then go at an angle. Right. Hit the mirror there. Yeah and then come down there. And hit the mirror back in the same spot. In the same spot because the mirror moves. The mirror's moving yeah. with If you look at the bars on the bridge, right. if the train was going the right speed, the light beam would actually follow those diagonals. Oh, that's cool. On that yeah. structure. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's okay. From our point of view. Right. Okay, so it would leave the bottom mirror, it would hit the top mirror, which had now an moved, uh -huh. and then it would hit the bottom mirror, but it would be exactly on those supports. I, I like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden it's a, it's a dance thing. I'm there. It's the relativity dance. Everybody's doing it. <laughs> you guys, I'm, I'm quitting. <laughs> all right, I'm liking that. I was liking that. Okay. <laughs> so now, so what does that uh, tell us right. about the universe right. when we look at light travel yeah. in that? Yeah. What, 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 what was Einstein if saying? Was Just to be clear, yeah. we have we have two people disagreeing what right. the light is doing. That's what I'm right. saying. One people say, yeah. this is just going straight up and down. We right. say, no, it's not. So that's the guy sitting right. on the train. He's sitting in the seat. He's watching the light just going up and down. And yeah. we, and that's all he said. That's yeah. all it. And we're not on the train, yeah. and we see the light doing this. And right. we see it going just like the yeah. light we saw earlier. Okay, now, if he was doing this with basketball, you know, or I don't know, whatever, it would not be a big argument. But right. with the beam of light, it has something very special about it, which is that he says that the speed of light is a certain number, right? Probably three hundred thousand kilometers per second. Okay. And we would which say, is the constant, yeah, right? We yes. Would say, oh, it's actually the same from our point of view too, and that's what's so strange. Therein that lies the rub. the rub, because okay. the two perspectives yeah. are at odds, uh, apparently or okay. seemingly. Yeah. But the constant yeah. is the speed yeah. of light, and we, we know that's a constant. We all yeah. measure the speed of light no matter what the no hell matter we're what. doing. Right. So, no matter where we are, no matter how we're moving or right. not moving. Or not moving. Everybody right. measures the same speed of light. Right. If that's the case, then how is it possible for the light beam to go from the bottom of the train to the top? What is that distance? It's that. Right. Yeah. And we say yeah. that beam of light went on an angle. angle. Right. The hypotenuse. Right. We all know the hypotenuse is bigger than the leg of the triangle. You right. You can see it in those struts. The up and down, down length is shorter than the diagonal length. Right, right, yeah. exactly. So we say the light beam traveled the same speed but a longer distance. Therefore, your clock is ticking slowly. Right. You think your clock ah. is the same time it goes this distance. Uh -huh. It actually went further. Right. So yep. compared to our clock, we're like your clock is ticking slowly. Right. So now from that, yeah. as a thought experiment, yeah. knowing the speed of light, yeah. what we are able to glean and determine yeah. mathematically yeah. is the closer I am to that, my clock is ticking more slowly. Yes. The closer, the faster you the move, faster the faster I'm of moving. Light. Right. So in other words, when I say closer I am, I mean like I'm on the train. Right. So I am that light. As long as you're not moving relative to your mirrors and uh, you're good. Right. But if you travel even faster than the train we've rigged to go with the There's got another train coming now. One coming. Okay. So just just imagine the light being go boop, boop, yeah. boop, yeah. boop, yeah. boop, yeah. boop, yeah. boop. Yeah. And if the train's going super fast, the diagonal's even longer, so the clock's running even slower. Right. And as you approach the speed of light, you'll be running away from our point of view from the light pulse right. nearly as fast as the light pulse is trying to make it to your mirror and we'll think your clock stopped. There you go. Yeah. Boom. All right. And this dude. Another victory dance. <laughs> <laughs> relativity. <The> relativity. <laughs>